We're ready. Um, Rachel was our number one runner throughout most of the fall last year, led our team in almost all of our races, so she will speak some. Uh, she'll answer any of your questions about the women's team. I can help a little bit with that if you want. And then briefly, Val. Uh, Val was a, a good runner for us, an NCAA finalist in the steeplechase for us, and on our 2000. 19, no, 18 uh, NCAA championship cross country team. But honestly, and I would say this if she was in the room, nothing that forecast being uh, an Olympic finalist. But upon graduation and settling into a, a grown up life, she found time to continue to run and continue to make improvements in her athletic life and really transformed herself uh, <laughs> far more to her credit than to mine or Coach Burroughs. Uh, she did it so much on her own and uh, became a whole new runner. I just left her a few minutes ago. Uh, she was here with some of you earlier today. There's a world championship in 2022, another world championship in 23, and an Olympic Games in 24, and that was the subject of our conversation 10 minutes ago, is what comes now. So super proud uh, of her and for her, uh, and I think you'll be seeing some more of her before long. We're all yours now. Both of you, how have you had to alter your workouts this year, especially given the like air pollution and smoke in here? Has that made it more challenging to train for the upcoming season? Go ahead. Um, I don't think the assignments have varied much. I mean, we just do what we're told. Um, I'd say a lot of the runs, you can feel the difference with the air quality, as you mentioned. And, you know, the heat and the fires obviously do affect you. But um, I don't think anything has been too crazy to, to manage. You know, we still run outside every day. I, I haven't hit the treadmill at all. Um, and we just kind of work around that. If we need to go earlier, we go earlier. If we need to go later, we go later. It just kind of, you make it work. We follow the air quality index, which has been imperfect for sure for a week or two weeks. Uh, but it was much worse sometimes last fall when we did have to tell them day off. Uh, so far, we've been able to run every day. It's, it's more troublesome for, from one individual to the next. So we've had some people that needed to go on the treadmill, but as Rachel said, just about everybody's pushed through it so far. Today's a great day. Rachel, uh, just curious with, uh, you know, trying to pack in a cross country season, a track season, and now cross country again in the last I guess six, seven months. Do you feel like that you've had normal training or does it feel like it's been a lot in a short amount of time? I think that's difficult to answer because kind of I feel both ways. Uh, it obviously has been a long season for track and now cross country. Um, I think it felt a lot longer when we didn't have races going on. So that was tough to, to balance that and, and keep going. But no, I think when it comes to summer, especially it, Training comes pretty naturally, and it's pretty easy to just run a lot, a lot, a lot, and not really think much of it. So while it's been a long season, we're now just building a lot of mileage, and you know the team has really come together, and everyone's working really hard. So nothing feels too strenuous or overwhelming at the time. Coach, you've got a uh, pretty substantial recruiting class on the men's side. I know some transfers that uh, are going to play into the mix this year as well. Can you kind of speak to expectations and what you see in that group? The world of transfers has changed a lot in the last few years, making it much easier for an athlete to leave one school with a degree and yet have eligibility to use somewhere else. It's too complicated to go into great detail here today, but we will have three male and two female experienced people joining our squads that could help our varsities immediately, we hope. And then also uh, we've had a, 
successful year with young people, with fresh, true freshmen, most notably on the men's side, 10, 10 new freshmen when a normal year is four. So uh, there are a lot of new faces. They all have aspirations. Uh, both the men's teams and the women's teams could appear quite differently uh, by October. Hey, Mark. Um, with Eduardo Herrera on the uh, on the men's side, I know his outdoor season didn't end the way you or him wanted it to. Uh, I guess how did that? Uh, uh, what approach did you take with him over summer? Did you encourage him to, to shut it down for a little bit? Did you ramp up the training? I guess uh, you know what was the the approach to that after the outdoor season lead into cross country here. I feel I didn't handle him well from March of 20 to June of 21, almost July of 21. It was a year that we'd never experienced before and we were making it up as we went along and we made the best decisions we could, but in retrospect, I feel there were some decisions I wish I made a different way. So he was getting tired by the end of the outdoor track season uh, he had some excellent cross-country races for us, won the Pac-12 cross-country championship in early March, ran some very good track races, a school record at 1,500 meters and one of the fastest 5,000 meter times in the outdoor track season just a handful of weeks after cross-country concluded, uh, but did indeed end June disappointed with uh, his performance at the NCAA, which is more my fault than his. Anyway, what was obvious was that he needed a big rest. And so after the Olympic trials, I gave him the longest rest I've ever given any collegiate athlete and told him, go home, don't move a muscle. Uh, I think he might have moved a muscle or two because he returned just 10 days ago. He's in pretty good shape. I think he's re well rested. Uh, his well is topped off, I think. And now we just have to resume racing carefully. Coach, Val said you're one of the best coaches in the world. What do you think sets you and your program apart from other schools? Well, we have everything you need to be a great middle or long distance runner here at Colorado. Now, of course, Val's out two years, but she had four or five years with us, and then she has the momentum of that still and so we have a great town. We have access to hundreds of miles of unpaved training venues. Uh, we have a town that appreciates uh, athletes like Val and Jenny Simpson and Emma Coburn and, and our collegians. We have a, you go to a restaurant in town and their pictures are on the wall. I have, Heather Burroughs is the best associate head coach in the country. Uh, we wouldn't be nearly as good without her. Excellent nutritional staff, excellent strength and conditioning staff. My recruiting coordinator, Billy Nelson, is the best. So she praises me, but it takes a village to raise a team, and we have a killer village. Coach, My Life Sports, Alex Ramirez. Uh, I asked the previous um, uh, media uh, coach that uh, he, he's a volleyball coach. I asked him about the elevation and how that affects the running, right? And he had mentioned that a lot of the times most of the schedule is at sea level with the Pac-12. So how do you feel that is an advantage to you or, you know, do you guys use that as uh, something that you can, you know, move forward with? Rachel and I were just discussing this 10 minutes ago that we don't feel it's an advantage to train up here. A lot of people ask me that, if it's an advantage to train at this altitude. I don't think it's a big advantage to train up here. I think it probably is an advantage to race opponents up here, but in the sport of cross country, we never do. So uh, we go to sea level. We might have a few more red blood cells than a sea level team. Uh, but also we train a lot slower because we're up here all the time. I, I think it's a balance. Anyway, probably an advantage if they come up here to race us, but that only happens once every 12 years. 
Rachel, you had a strong season last year. What are your goals heading into the, your senior year, and um, how how did you change your training regimen, if at all, to get to that point? Um, I mean, every year, obviously, I just want to get at better at what I do, um, and I want the team to get better with me. So I think going into the season with time goals or place goals is never really what I do. Um, I'm really looking forward to the season. Like As Mark said, we have a lot of talented individuals coming in, so my goal would obviously be place well as a team coming NCAAs um, for cross as that's a huge thing for us and then obviously stay healthy and stay motivated throughout indoor and outdoor in terms of training changing um, I mean run more run faster you know it's just uh, kind of keep it consistent I think is a big thing um, again with staying healthy is going to be really important this year as it is my last year and any little bump in the road might you know, throw that off. Um, but yeah, pretty much just stay healthy and motivated for the next three seasons. Do we have any more questions for either one of our cross country representatives? All right, thank you. We'll have uh, uh, football coach Carl Durrell appear in about 15 minutes. Thank you, everybody.